Mbunas are a magnificent African cichlid from Lake Malawi. They are a joy to keep, but if you don't give them the right conditions, it can lead to some pretty nasty misadventures. Hi everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Cichlidae. Today I'm gonna talk about Mbunas and what they're compatible with, so stay tuned. Before we get started, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. I have plenty of videos about fish keeping and my fish keeping adventures. So subscribe and make sure not to miss a single video. Before we dive into the subject, I just want to say I'm going to be talking about Mbuna compatibility, meaning what Mbunas are best compatible with. If you, after watching this video, you figure you have Mbunas with other African cichlids and they're doing fine, that's fine for you. But the thing is, sometimes we do mixes that work for us that don't work for others. So I'm gonna mention the mixes that would work for everybody in this video. So I'm not here to tell you what might work, I'm here to tell you what will work and will give you the best results in your aquarium. So a little more about Mbunas. <laughs> what is an Mbuna? Well, Lake Malawi cichlids are separated into two different groups, the Embunas and the non-Embunas. They're separated based on their DNA. In the Embuna groups, you have all the species that we know and love, Labidochromis, Pseudotrophaeus, Eodotrophaeus, you name it. I'm gonna put a list of all the Embunas in the video description to help you out. Non-Embunas are other fish such as Olonocara, Haps, and Predators. I have other videos about those, but today is all about Embunas. So Embunas can actually be a very intimidating fish. If you read about it, you probably read on forums, people saying, oh, they're aggressive and everything, but it's easy, if you do it right, to have a harmonious aquarium with Embunas. So keep eight to 10 Embunas per 30 gallons of water in your aquarium. That should be a good rule of thumb as for how many Embunas and keep them in groups of four or more of the same species in order to see their behavior and to reduce aggressivity. This is especially important for the infamous Pseudotrophaeus de Mazoni, which is a magnificent fish, but has the reputation of being aggressive. Keep them in bigger groups and you'll have a lot less problems with this. So for compatibility, I'm gonna separate the Embunas into two different groups. They're not scientifically split into these groups, but I'm splitting them anyways, into Embuna herbivores and omnivores, because yes, they do not have all the same diet, but in the aquarium, we all feed them the same thing and they are fine with it. But since we're talking about compatibility, the omnivore and herbivore are compatible with different fish. More about that later. The best way to know if your Mbuna is a herbivore or a omnivore is to ask them. If they don't answer or you don't speak fish language, it, it can happen, you know, we're not all blessed with that. Um, an easy way to find out is to, well, find their name. You have to have them properly identified and go on the link that I'm gonna write down below and in the video description. Cichlid Forum Profiles is a gold mine of information on all African cichlids and American cichlids as well. So go check it out and go binge read all of the cichlid profiles. It's a lot of fun. I use that website a lot. So now that we know what an Mbuna is and that they have different diets, let's check what they're compatible with. Starting off with the herbivore Mbunas. Certain notable Mbunas are the Pseudotrophaeus de Mazoni, Eodotrophaeus springeré rusty, and the Labidochromis hongi. These are just three of the infinity number of Mbunas in the lake. I'm not exaggerating. Herbivore Mbunas are compatible with omnivore and bunas, obviously, in the same rules that I mentioned above, four per species ideally, and about eight to 10 of fish for 30 gallons of water. If you mix these two together, uh, just feed mainly a herbivore diet and everyone will be happy. If your tank is big enough, they are also compatible behavior-wise and diet-wise with Lake Tanganyika herbivores such as the Trophius, which is an extremely fun fish to keep. Many aquarists prefer having Trophius-only tanks, which are amazing, but you can also mix them with Embunas and they will be very happy fish. They are compatible with caution with Lake Victoria cichlids. Only take one species of Lake Victoria cichlids as they are not compatible within each other. You can't put three different kinds of Lake Victoria cichlids. 
but you can put three of a same kind of Vic Lake Victoria cichlid. Why I say compatible with caution is because certain herbivore embunas can be pretty aggressive. And Lake Victoria cichlids aren't as aggressive and, well, they might get beat up. You know your fish. You know what they're like. You know their behavior. If you have a gigantic Sinotilapia who beats everybody up, don't add a Lake Victoria cichlid. Use your judgment. Now let's look at those omnivores. The most popular embunas are omnivores. So the yellow Labidochromis is an omnivore. It's actually an insectivore in the wild. Also the Pseudotrophius acei, that's an omnivore as well. And the Pseudotrophius cabro. Not many people know this, but these fish are actually omnivores. But they can thrive in an aquarium with the herbivore diet. So obviously they are compatible with omnivore embunas and herbivores as well. What's different than the other embunas is that they are compatible with the other Lake Malawi cichlids, the non-embunas. So peacocks, haps, and certain predators. Not all, just use your judgment. A little yellow lab will not survive with a fully sized Dimidiochromis, but a yellow lab and a nimble chromis Venistus will be very happy together. A good rule of thumb is if they fit in their mouth, they're not compatible. These omnivores are also compatible with Lake Tanganyika trophies, the herbivores. So obviously feed them a herbivorous diet because the Lake Tanganyika trophies, their diet is a little bit more strict even than the embunas. They can blow, they can constipate if ever they eat omnivores food. The yellow labs, they don't mind eating salad. As for Lake Victoria cichlids, I find them a little bit even more compatible than the herbivores are with them because the omnivores are often a little bit less aggressive. But of course, as with the herbivores, use your common sense. You know your fish, you know how they are, but technically they would be compatible. So what are embunas not at all compatible with? Well, for instance, they're not compatible with Lake Tanganyika carnivores. The carnivores are actually a lot more peaceful than our embunas. They would not survive long in the aquarium. Certain people have had it done with yellow labs or acai, some of the omnivorous cichlids, the more peaceful ones. But really, it depends on the fish behavior. For example, for the big carnivores like Frontosa from Lake Tanganyika, do not mix them with embunas. The embunas will eat up their fins. As for the smaller uh, carnivores, such as shell dwellers or stuff like that, they just, they'll eat their whole body. <laughs> they will not live long with embunas. They are also not compatible with giant predators such as the Mesochromis or some Aristochromis or just any fish that becomes 12 inches long. If your embunas are, let's say, good six inches full size of course they might be able they might be compatible they might be able to survive in that environment and really take their place but if you're adding smaller fish with big big predators uh, I wouldn't risk it so now I've looked at what African cichlids and bunas are compatible with but there's also the non-African cichlids so what they're compatible with on in other kinds of fish, I would mix them with uh, Ancestrus, which are the best algae eater. I have a whole video about them. I love this fish. Check out the video if you're planning on integrating them. There are certain precautions to take because they're a little bit more fragile. Check out the video if you want those algae eaters. There's also loaches. I'm not a fan of clown loaches. Many people like adding them, have success. I am not a fan. I find it's way too easy for them to get ick. And I've heard way too many horror stories to consider adding clown loaches to an African cichlid tank. But yo-yo loaches, those are my favorite. I love them. They're super awesome. And they get a decent size too. You can also add Cynodontis. They're actually some that come from the Great Lakes in Africa. They're very compatible with embunas and most other African cichlids as well. As for what they're not compatible with in other than the African cichlids, everything else. I don't mix them with American cichlids. Certain aquarists have had success. I don't do it. The water parameters are too different. We have to keep our pH higher for African cichlids, whereas it's lower for Americans. The behavior, well, sometimes it's similar. The behavior, the diet's different. Like you do not feed bloodworms to embunas, but you feed them to American cichlids. So also all community or tropical fish. 
just don't mix them in. Don't even try. You will not keep your community fish a minute with African cichlids or embunas in this case that we're talking about. All right, so that's it. I think I covered the whole subject of embuna compatibility. If there's anything you'd like to add, if you've ever kept these fish, you have any experiences you'd like to share, write about it in the comments. I love reading it. I always learn from my experience, but also from yours. So don't be shy to leave me a comment. I love reading those, even though I don't always have time to get to them quickly. So if you want more fishy content in between my videos, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. I ship throughout Canada. Sometimes it can be complicated in the winter, but we always manage to find a way, or we just wait. If you like this fabulous Cichlid Geek t-shirt, this is the old model, it's still available on the Teespring store, but I ordered the samples of the new ones and I can't wait to get them to show you and once I'm sure the quality is good, well, I'll be able to put them up on the website. So if ever you like this model, get it while they last. Check out the Teespring store, the t-shirt ship worldwide. And every shirt you get encourages me, gives me a little bit of money to continue doing what I'm doing. Of my life project of having a local fish store and this YouTube channel, which I really enjoy doing. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.